let's take a look at some methods that are used for studying the brain. For each of the methods that we'll look at, we'll be interested in two kinds of information. First, we'll be interested in whether the method can tell us where in the brain a particular process is occurring. Second, and perhaps more importantly, we'll want to know when does that particular area of the brain begin to participate in that activity or process. The earliest imaging technique was the x-ray, and on this slide you see the first x-ray that was ever taken of the wife's hand of the man who accidentally invented the x-ray. In 1895, the x-ray was accidentally discovered by Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen. The discovery occurred when Röntgen was exposing different kinds of paper and film to radiation. A sad chapter in this story is that Röntgen's wife, whose hand we see in the first x-ray, succumbed to cancer that was likely caused due to her being exposed to radiation in the laboratory. X-rays provide two-dimensional views of the human body and also can be of the human head. Here we see a hand with some broken fingers. Can you spot the breaks in the fingers? It takes a fair amount of training to be able to read x-rays proficiently. For me, this image took a very long time for me to actually see some of the breaks in the bones of the hand. In this image, you see that someone has a nail in, inside the skull, which actually happens quite regularly with people using nail guns. Here we can see a brain tumor in an x-ray. You see the area of lightness is indicating to a physician that there is a growth there that should not be there. In sum, with x-ray, we get two-dimensional views of the body. These images are fairly low resolution and blurry, so the information we get is low quality. When we think about our evaluation for how well the technique gives us information about where in the brain and when something occurs in the brain, the x-ray fares the worst of all of the techniques we'll look at. The information about where in the brain is pretty low quality, and when we think about when in the brain something is occurring, the x-ray provides no information about that. In terms of using a technique for research, the x-ray has a potential disadvantage, and that is the risk of being exposed to radiation. So, having many, many, many x-rays in one's lifetime exposes one to radiation, which can lead to health problems such as cancer. The second technique that we'll take a look at is the CAT scan, also known as computerized axial tomography. It is a second generation form of x-ray in which x-rays are taken, but software is used to create three-dimensional views of the body. With CAT scan, understanding where in the brain or body something is aberrant is a little bit better than with x-ray. But like x-ray, the CAT scan gives us no information about when a particular process or activity starts in a brain location. As with x-ray, CAT scans come with a risk, that is, it exposes the patient to radiation. So if you have many, many, many CAT scans in your life, your risks of developing cancer increases. When one is getting x-rays or CAT scans, to diagnose health problems, it's in their best interest to undergo these scans. But in research, when you are participating in a study to find out new knowledge that has nothing to do with your health, then it's a risk of participation, and the researcher would have to disclose this risk in the informed consent process. Our third technique for imaging the body is magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. MRI uses a magnet to change the cells in the body and measure then their floating back to a resting state using sophisticated computerized software. 
Because MRI does not expose the patient to radiation, it is safer than x-rays or CT scanning. However, it requires the patient not to have any metal in their body because the metal could be displaced causing great pain or even death. This is a 2D image of an MRI scan, but physicians can actually play multiple versions of a 2D scan and get a 3D-like view of parts of the brain. MRI gives excellent views about where in the brain something has occurred, such as a stroke or a damage due to trauma. However, just like x-ray and CT scanning, MRI gives no information, none, zilch, zero, about when that particular activity has occurred in the brain. That's all for now.